What's going on guys? Welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to go over exactly how to solve these four problems using a one simple trick. Unless you're a math genius, your mind probably goes blank every now and then whenever you see a word problems. And as a result, people end up trying these insane methods and their numbers end up getting really big or super complicated or worst of all, not getting the right answer. And you know what the crazy thing is? These questions are actually really simple. All you have to do is just and you're going to end up with the answer super quickly. And because these word problems are on the SAT every single time, like I'm not even joking, every single exam, there is going to be a word problem. You want to make sure you know how to solve these questions correctly, but also quickly. So let's go over this fail proof method in solving these word problems. Let's go. So how can we recognize that we are dealing with a word problem? It's actually really simple. Look at the question and if it has a lot of words in it, if it's like a wall of text, there's a very high chance it's going to be a word problem. And to solve all these word problems, all you have to do is just convert words into numbers. That's it. If you can convert words into numbers, you are going to be the king of word problems. Nothing's going to be impossible. So let me show you what I exactly mean by converting words into numbers. Let's dive into this question. So whenever it comes to word problem, the first thing you want to do is going to be identifying key informations. Okay. And based on the key information, what we're going to do is we're going to create equations. Okay. So let's look at this question for an example. At a used book sale, a paper book sells for $3 each and a hard book sells for $8 each. If Claude purchased 10 books at a total cost of $45 at a used book sale, how many hard books did, did, um, did he purchase? So what we are looking for in this case is the number of hard books, hard books, right? So the first thing we have to do is identify key information and we did exactly that. Okay. So we know that paperback is going to be $3 each and hard books is going to be $8 each. So we're just going to write that down. Hard is going to be $8 each and soft is going to be $3 each. Okay. And another thing that the question tells us is that the person purchased 10 books total. So we know that total book is going to be 10 right and the total cost is going to be 45 dollars right and based on this key information what we're going to do is we're going to create equations okay so our first equation is going to be based on the total number of books and the total number of books is going to be 10 and we know that total number of books is made out of hard books plus soft books right and that's going to equal 10 and that's going to be your first equation right there right so our equation number one is going to be h plus s which is number of hard books plus number of soft books and that's going to equal 10. and the second equation is going to come from our cost okay so what we know is that the total cost the total money that they spent on the book was 45 dollars so total cost comes from money on hard books plus money on soft books right and if you add those two monies up you get the total cost which is 45 dollars so how can we find out exactly how much money was spent on hard books that's really simple you just multiply the number of hard books that you bought by how many you bought if you multiply those two things together you can find out how much it how much you spent on hard books so how many hard books did we buy we bought h books we don't know how many we bought and how much do they cost each it's going to be eight dollars each and if you do eight h that's going to give you the total money spent on hard books and you can do the similar for soft books it's going to be how much is the book um how much is the soft book it's going to be three dollars and how many did you buy you bought s soft books and if you do that, it's going to end up with $45. And that's going to be your second equation. So what we do is we put it right there. 8H plus 3S is going to equal 45. And now we're going to use these two equations to find out exactly how many hard books that we bought. Okay. So what we're looking for is H. So we're going to use systems of equations to find out exactly what H is. And we're going to use elimination. Okay. If you're not sure why we're using elimination here, Go back to a systems lecture there's going to be a link right there it's going to outline exactly everything you need to know since what we're looking for is h we're going to try to eliminate s and how we can do that multiply the top equation by three that will match up the s's so it's going to become 3h plus 3s is equal to 30. okay and if you subtract the whole thing you end up with 5h plus 0 is equal to 15. you, you get that h is equal to 3. okay that means we bought three hard books total Okay, so it's actually really simple. All you have to do is just convert words into equations. And to do that, you need two things. You first have to get 
key informations. And based on the key information, you can make up this equation. Okay, so key information is here and equations look like that here and you use that to solve and find the answer. Let's go to the second one. This one's actually going to be similar to the first one, but let's try it out again. So the first thing we're going to do is identify the key information, right? So let's read the question. A movie theater sells two types of tickets, okay? And there's going to be an adult ticket and there's going to be a child's ticket. Adult is $12, child is $8. If the theater sold 30 tickets for a total money of $300, how much in dollars was spent on adult tickets, okay? So what are we looking for? The question is money on adults, okay? That's what we're looking for. So identify the key information. We know that adult tickets, um, it's gonna be adult ticket, it's going to be $12. And a child's ticket is going to be $8. $8, that's a terrible dollar. It's gonna be $8, right? And what we know is that they sold total of 30 tickets, right? So total sold is going to be 30 tickets and total money from 30 ticket sales is going to be $300, right? So based on that, we are going to now make an equation out of it, okay? So second step is equations. So what we know is total number of tickets sold is going to be 30 tickets and total sold is made up by number of adult tickets and number of children's tickets, which means total sold is going to be same as adult plus children's tickets and that's gonna equal 30 tickets, which means your equation is going to be A plus C is going to equal 30 because A is the number of the adult and C is the number of children's tickets sold, right? And the second equation that we can get is from the number of money generated or the amount of money generated, right? So how do we find the left side? Well, we know that money generated is made of two parts. It's going to be money from adults ticket sales and money from children ticket sales. Right? So how do we find out the money from adult ticket sales? You just multiply the cost, which is $12, by the number of adult tickets sold. That will give you a number of money generated from adult tickets. And next thing you can do is for the same thing for children, it's going to be eight times C. And that's going to give you the money generated from children's tickets. So that is going to, the sum of it is gonna to equal to what? It's gonna equal 300, which means 12A plus eight C, is equal to 300, okay? And now that we got two equations, what we can do is we can use substitution or elimination to find out what we have to find. And what we have to find out is how much money was spent on adult tickets. And how what represents that is going to be 12A because 12 times A is going to give you money spent on, money spent by adults, right? So what we need to do is find out what A is and plug it in and then we can find out the money spent by adults, okay? So what we need to do is find A. And how can we do that? We can do that by getting rid of the C. So what we're gonna do is multiply the bottom equation by A so that our C's are matching up. So 12A, let me just write this down one more time. And multiply by eight, 8A plus 8C is gonna equal to 40. And what do we do? We subtract it, and that will be 4a plus 0 is equal to 60, a is equal to 15, okay? That means we sold a total of 18 or 15 adult tickets. And with this, what do we do? We plug it in to 12a, and that should give us total money spent by the adults. So 12 times 15 is going to be 180, right? Yeah, so that is going to be your answer. How much did they spend on adults? They spent a total of 180. Make sense? So the first thing you do is identify the key information, and then with that, you make two equations and you use systems to solve again. Let's go to the last one. A landscaper is designing a rectangular garden, and the length of the garden is to be five feet longer than the width. Okay, that sounds pretty important. If the area of the garden will be 104 square feet, what will be the length in feet of the garden, right? So let's think about this. Based on the information that we have, what we know so far is that length is five more than W, right? And we know that area is going to be 104, okay? So that's going to be our key information. And from this, we're gonna make two equations, okay? So length is five more than width. That looks like length is 
five more. So there's width and there's five more than width. Okay. So that's going to be our first equation. And second one equation, second equation is going to be our area, right? Area is going to be 104. And how do we get area? It's going to be length times width. Okay. So that's going to be our second, second equation. And this one's going to be our first equation. And we're going to use this to find out what our answer is. And what are we looking for in this case? We are looking for the length. Okay. So what we're looking for is what is length equal to? So what do we do? We try to get rid of W and find out exactly what L is. In this case, we're going to use substitution. So how can we do that? To eliminate W, what we're going to do is we're going to set the equation equal to W. So it's going to be L minus five is equal to W. Okay. And with this, we're going to substitute it right in there. So 104 is equal to L times W or same thing as L times L minus five, right? And that's going to equal 104. And if you distribute this, you get L squared minus five L is equal to 104. And you see a square. So that probably means it has to do something with quadratics. And if for quadratics, what do you do? You have to set it equal to zero to find out what the answer is. If that doesn't make sense, check out the quadratics video linked above. So let's just move this up here. And if we move 104 to the other side, then our equation is going to look like L squared minus 5L minus 104 is equal to zero. And all we have to do now is just factor this and you can find out exactly what your answer is. But 104 is a big number. It might be a little bit tough for us to factor it. And what you can see is that it's a 30, number 35, which means it's from a calculator section because section three, no calculator section only has up until 20 questions. So number 35, it means it's a calculator section, which means we can use our calculator. So let's use our calculator to factor. So how you do that is you first go to apps. And if you go down to number eight, you're going to see a poly SMLT2. That stands for polynomial simulator. And the first one says polynomial root finder, go into that and just make sure your screen looks like that. And you hit next and you just plug in numbers based on what your equation is. Okay. So our L or coefficient of L squared is going to be one. So we just put one and it's minus and minus five minus 104. And after you do that, you hit the graph button, which stands for solving. And if you solve it, you find out that our L value can either equal minus L minus eight or 13. Okay. That means our length can either be minus eight or 13, but can both of them be our answers? And that is no, it can't. Only a positive number can be an answer for a free response question. But more importantly, how can you have a length of minus eight? Like it's minus eight inches long. What does that even mean? It doesn't make sense. Okay. So our answer is going to be 13. Does that make sense? So it's the same thing over and over again. First identify the key information and then solve, make the equations and solve for it using a systems of equations. If you don't know what systems of equation is, make sure you check out the lecture It's up there somewhere. I think. And that's exactly how you solve these square problems. What you want to do is first identify exactly what the key informations are. And based on those key informations, you have to create equations from that and just use those equations. And you should be able to find out exactly what your answer is. Honestly, I could have gone more in detail into each step in this problem, but that would have made the video 40 minutes long. However, if you want to really master these word problems and go deep down into the explanations by step by step, then there's going to be a link in the description box down below, and it's going to take you to a private lecture. And in the lecture, you're going to get three things. First, you're going to get a full length lecture on word problems, how to approach them, how to solve them step by step explained. And second, there's also going to be a worksheet that goes along with the lecture, which you can print out and follow along the video with it. And also it's going to exactly point out what you need to know, those little tips and tricks to solve these word problems. So they are going to be really helpful. And last but not least, there's also going to be a set of practice questions at the end of the lecture where you can try out these word problems to see if you really understood how to solve these word problems. And they are just a collection of actual SAT word problems. So if you can solve those questions, I think you're in a pretty good shape. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys made it until the end, very proud of you. Not many people actually made it till the end. If you guys like this video or found this video helpful at all, make sure you guys smash the like button. And if you love this kind of content and would love to see more, I would highly suggest you subscribe to the channel because every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3 30 PM, I release these videos summarizing exactly what you need to know for the SAT section. Watching these videos alone will save you so much time. All that time that you would spend going over these tests, test prep books, trying to understand exactly what you need to know for the SAT. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it in the description box down below. And if there is something you want to see next, let me know in the comment box, because as always, this channel is based on what you guys want to see and not what I want to talk about.